everybody, welcome back to Rain and Paws. I'm Mitch and today I'm going to be painting a custom set of coasters and a placemat for a customer. Uh, she wanted a replica of the Galaxy set that I have up on our website, that's rainandpaws.com.au if you want to check out our, our products. And she wanted these coasters which are a Galaxy theme but she didn't want the teal, she doesn't like teal. So I'll be trying to recreate those using green instead of the, the teal and we're going to see how that goes. Uh, just before we start, I also wanted to show you the coaster holders that I've built. Uh, I got this idea from a lady named Natalie Ashley in the Shelley Art Bloom group. So thank you very much for this idea. It's absolutely amazing and your work looks stunning. So I've taken that idea and I've run with it. So all she does is she takes uh, MDF and cuts it into a square. So I've done the same and it's the same size as the coasters. When you're making squares, um, and putting things on a diagonal, they should fit into each other. So I've cut a square of 12mm MDF, I've used my router to round over the edges, and then I've cut some acrylic dowels. These are from a long rod, these are 6mm or 8mm acrylic dowel, and I've used my router to round over the ends so they're nice and smooth, so that won't autofocus, but I've smoothed those over, and then I've used my blowtorch to flame polish them. So when I ship these, these will be completely modular and I'll just assemble one so you can see it. And they'll look like this. So to drill the holes, I use my drill press so they're completely straight up and down and the coasters should sit nicely in there. Now they've got a little bit of give so you can take them out. They're gonna sit nicely in there and this is enough to hold six coasters or eight coasters. So we'll load them up plenty of space in there for eight coasters. Okay, and a little bit extra on top. So you could hold a little bit more, but yeah, just wanted to show you that design and the options that we'll have for this will be painted black or white, or you can choose to have them painted in the same style as your coasters, um, which is what Natalie Ashley does and hers looks stunning. So I think it's really good that you can have a coaster holder that matches your coasters. All right, so let's get straight into the painting and we'll see what we can do. Okay, so here I have my turntable ready to go and we've got some tiles. So the coasters I'm trying to create, I'll flash them up on the screen, are these galaxy ones. And like I said, the customer doesn't like blue or teal. So to be absolutely safe that there's gonna be no blue or teal in there, I'm going to recreate them from scratch. And as she wanted a custom placemat, I'm going to be pouring that as well. So this is the placemat. It's 22 centimeters by 30 centimeters. She specifically requested this size. And what I've done, this is just a piece of particle board that I've had left over. And I'm going, I've already varnished this with two coats of Joe Sonia gloss varnish. And that's just to stop the board from soaking up any of the paint and hopefully not warping. So we're going to see how that goes. It's the first time I've done anything on particle board. So we'll see what works. All right. So these coasters are done on a black background. So I have my black pillow here. And the colors I am using today are this little piggy enchantment, which is this lovely light purple. We've got this little piggy Venus. We've got this little piggy twinkle, this little piggy Pinot Gris. Uh, I've got my regular pouring medium with some nail holographic nail glitter flakes in there. I've got my cell activator, which is Pebio iridescent green yellow and Amsterdam Payne's gray cell activator as well. So, Twinkle is the This Little Piggy interference, I believe it's pink to purple, or violet to purple, violet to pink. And This Little Piggy Pinot Gris is interference green, so really spacey colors. And yeah, that uh, green yellow is going to be our cell activator. Uh, so if you want to buy any of the This Little Piggy pigments, you can get them at fluid-art.co online. Uh, that's the only place you can get them. And they also sell Australian Floetrol in uh, countries that are not Australia, as well as resin molds, paint mixers, all sorts of other things uh, available overseas. So get your hands on those. And if you're interested in doing this method of technique, you can take the Shelley Art Bloom course at shellyart.com.au. All right, that's all of that out of the way. And again, if you want to buy any of my products, anything that I make is for sale once it's ready, you can get that at rainandpaws.com.au. Okay, so let's start with our black pillow. 
Now my black pillow is British Paints exterior low sheen and I like the exterior because it's perfect straight out of the container, straight out of the bottle. You don't need to mix it with anything. You don't need to let it thicken up. Now, because I'm doing swipes, you don't want to put a lot of pillow on there, or if you do, make sure to spin it out so it flattens out nicely a little bit first. And that's just to stop the, sp the cells from spreading too much uh, once you spin it. So I'm going to layer my colors on the tile first, and I'm going to start with this little piggy twinkle. And then next to that, I'm not going to go on top. I'm going to go with the Pinot Gris. And this should give a, hopefully a really nice interference color to the background. Then I need to thin out my enchantment just a little bit. So with swipes, your consistency doesn't have to be all 100% the same, but it really does help to make sure that they are similar at least. And because I mixed up enchantment just yesterday, it hasn't had time to fully thicken and rest and settle like it normally does. So here's our enchantment. Got just a little bit of Venus. We don't want too much. And then our nail glitter is going to go on the swipe tool with our swipe colors. So I want Payne's Grey to be on top. So I'm just layering that on my swipe tool like this. The Pebio Iridescent Green Yellow underneath that. And now that I've got that layered on there, I want to tap a little bit off because too much cell activator on there will mean we'll get squiggly patterns and it'll look really, really strange. So that, and then I'm going to layer on my nail glitter onto the swipe tool as well. And let's just do a squiggly swipey thingy. And let's see what cells we get. Ooh, they look pretty. Okay, so it looks like a very different color palette without the teal. But I don't hate it. I actually really like that. So we're going to give this a second for the cells to develop because when you're using a Pebio color, the Pebio colors do tend to take a little bit to develop the cells. So you want to wait. You just want to give it a couple of seconds, let them form so that when you spin them out, all of those cells expand. If I was to spin that out now, that would all stretch, but then the cells would form afterwards and it doesn't give as good a look in mind. So let's spin this out and always give a gentle spin first so that you don't fling paint all over yourself. I like to use my spinner and my scraper to my advantage here and scrape up any extra. Now I can see that there's a lump of paint in the middle here, so I'm just going to move it. Whoop. Lucky I caught that. I haven't stuck my tile down. So I'm just going to move it off center slightly so that when we spin, it's going to push that paint outwards. Okay. Okay, this is looking very different because the colors aren't the same. So it's something we have to watch out for when you're recreating something, you want to try and do it as accurately as possible, but when you're not using the same colors, it can throw off the total color scheme. I am loving that yellow, uh, green yellow as the cell activator though, I think it's wonderful. That out. That's beautiful. And that twinkle in the background is throwing different colors as well. So that's great. Okay. So let's try the next one. The next one I'm going to do, I'm going to use the nail glitter on the background because I've just remembered that's what I've done with those other ones. 
uh, and I swirled the nail glitter around the background first to make it look like stars. I didn't put it on top. I'm going to do that right now. I put a big dollop on there and then use the spatula to spread that around. That's better. This is the hard thing too. I don't record what colors I use. So if a uh, palette has to be redone, I don't remember what I did. <laughs> so I'm going to start, uh, it's good that I've got these videos, but I'm going to start an Excel table with all the colors that I use for certain pieces so that I can remember them for later. And again, we want to go light with the color. It's space that's not a neon theme. And then I'll paint gray and pebio green. Mush that on. Oh, I don't like that center bit. I'm just gonna blow that out. Just to make sure that that cell activator actually spreads thin enough that it's going to work. If you layer it on too thick, it's not going to separate and give you those cells. I just didn't press hard enough when I swiped that one. So when you use nail glitter or any sort of glitter in your pouring medium, it's going to look milky white. And it looks amazing on this tile, but it won't dry that way. It will dry like this. So the pouring medium will dry clear and you'll be able to see the glitter just by itself. Now you can do the glitter two ways. With these, I spread the glitter like I did on that tile and I put it on the background. Or you can put the glitter in your resin. The glitter in your resin will give you a different effect and I really like the effect of the glitter in the resin itself as well. So two different ways you can do that. Okay. Pop down, isn't it? Loving that color scheme. Very different to the first ones that I did. I'm trying to figure out why I may have used a blue in there. I think I may have actually used this little piggy frost. So because we've taken that out, we're left with a much different result. So I'm just going to continue doing these. I'll speed through it so you don't have to watch every single tile be poured. And if I've got anything to say, I'll overlay it on top. Now I'll just cut in here. It is important that you do put enough pillow down. I very nearly didn't have enough on that one. So you do want to put a, a little bit, like you want to put enough down that you can spin it out, but not too much that it's going to stretch yourself too far with a swipe.
Now for this set, I'm going to do the yellow green on the top as my cell activator instead of on the bottom, just to see what different look we can get. And out of the two, I will pick which one I'm going to use for the placemat. So because the placemat is a lot bigger, I want to be sure of the pattern that I'm doing first before I put anything onto that. So this time when I layer, I'm going to put the yellow green first. And cell activators do behave differently when you layer them differently. Often I find if you put a black on top of a white, you'll get a really nice defined ghost cell. And if you put white on top of black, you'll get a really deep uh, peacock cell. Now because I'm using black, I'm going to start using up the pillow paint that I have in the cup. So this is everything that I've just scraped off into my waste cup and I'm going to use that now as my pillow. So you can do that um, up to a certain point uh, before it gets too contaminated with all the glossy components from your pouring medium. So it's a great way to reuse paint and not waste as much. Now I'm not going to put as much of anything on this this time because I think I'm using too much paint and I'm losing the swirly design of the galaxy that I got on the first cup. Just putting on less paint. Now here's a tip if you're doing this background swipe uh, on any of your paintings, don't try to go over an area that you've already swiped. So you can see that there's quite a concentration of that glitter in the middle there, but don't be tempted to go back over it to try and spread that out. If you do, you'll just end up mixing the background all the way into your glitter and it won't look good. Now I think I've got a hair in my painting. Is it a hair? Nope, just a really fine line of paint. So always be on the lookout for globs and goobers. You do not want them in your final piece because they will remain lumpy. Okay, so I have my newly made spinner board. This is the one that I made in my custom spinner video. You can check that out here. I'll try and remember to link the card. And I, because I made this for a brand new spinner, the box underneath was a different size. So this is my old spinner. And I already had a platform, but it was rectangular. So all I did was change the box from that rectangular platform onto this one. And because I made this board for a smaller spinner, the holes are drilled there. So hopefully the paint's going to fill that up and they're not going to be an issue. 
So let's get our placemat on here and I will raise the camera. And we're going to do the same thing with our paint. Gonna put a layer of pillow down first. And again, not too much. Don't know why I always choose to christen my new spinners with black paint. That's flowing and moving a little bit. All right, I'll bring it to the center. All right. I'm going to spin that just a touch. Okay. Now, the background. Now, because it's rectangular, it's going to be really difficult to stretch everything from one edge to the other. So I'm going to use up all of this glitter paint. have and I'm going to use my bigger spatula here to smooge that around as Lisa would say. If you don't know who Lisa is you're living under a rock. <laughs> uh, Lisa Marvin is a good friend of mine and an amazing talented artist so check out her channel I've got a link to her channel in my description box. Now I know I said earlier in the video not to go over a section that had too much concentration there, but I was able to with this one. Okay, now it's time for the swipe. So I am going to get a bigger swipey tool. I'm going to use this one. So this is my Liquitex number two. And should I go diagonal? No, I'm just going to go straight across the center. And now for our swipe colors, our cell activator. So I'm going to do the green on top. I really like how that's looking. Okay, and let's swipe. I lost a lot of the cell activator, but I still have a whole heap on here. Well, I kind of like that. I'm not going to swipe over that again. So what I did is I tilted my spatula at the start, but forgot to lower it down enough by the time I got to the end. So all of my cell activator is concentrated here and it sort of peters out at the end. But let's see what happens when we spin this. Oh, that color blending is so cool. Okay. Let's spin it out and see what result we get. And if I'm not happy with it, I will redo it. So naturally with longer rectangular boards, all of the color is going to spin to the longest end. So this end. So just be conscious of that if you're doing a rectangle.
So I really hope my customer is happy with these coasters and her placemat. I think they look absolutely amazing. Um, the one thing I did forget is I forgot to tape up the bottom of my placemat. So there is a bit of paint under there, but I'm either going to sand that flat once I've applied the resin. I will tape it up before I put the resin on just because that'll be a lot easier to remove it. And then because it is MDF or plywood, I'll be able to flip that over once the resin is completely cured. I wouldn't do it beforehand. And I will just sand that flat with my orbital sander uh, to get rid of any paint that's underneath. So it's a nice clean uh, wooden background. That or I will put a uh, felt backing or a cork backing on it to match the coasters as well. So if you're liking what I'm doing here guys, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.